Chapter 10 of The American Housewife. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nick Number. The American Housewife by Anonymous. Chapter 10 152. Cream Cakes. Mix half a pint of thick cream with the same quantity of milk four eggs, and flour to render them just stiff enough to drop on buttered tins. They should be dropped by the large spoonful several inches apart and baked in a quick oven. 153. Crumpets. Take three teacups of raised dough and work into it with the hand half a teacup of melted butter, three eggs, and milk to render it a thick batter. Turn it into a buttered bake pan. Let it remain fifteen minutes, then put on a bake pan, heated so as to scorch flour. It will bake in half an hour. 154. Rice Cakes Mix a pint of rice boiled soft with a pint of milk, a teaspoonful of salt, and three eggs beaten to a froth. Stir in rice or wheat flour till of the right consistency to fry. If you like them baked, add two more eggs and enough more flour to make them stiff enough to roll out, and cut them into cakes. 155. Rice Ruffs to a pint of rice flour put boiling water or milk sufficient to make a thick batter. Beat four eggs, when it is cool, and put in, together with a teaspoonful of salt. Drop this mixture by the large spoonful into hot fat. 156. Buckwheat Cakes Mix a quart of buckwheat flour with a pint of lukewarm milk, water will do but is not as good, and a teacup of yeast. Set it in a warm place to rise. When light, which will be in the course of eight or ten hours if family yeast is used, if brewer's yeast is used, they will rise much quicker. Add a teaspoonful of salt. If sour, the same quantity of saleratus dissolved in a little milk and strained. If they are too thick, thin them with cold milk or water. Fry them in just fat enough to prevent their sticking to the frying pan. 157. Economy Cakes Rusked bread, or that which is old and sour, can be made into nice cakes. The bread should be cut into small pieces and soaked in cold water till very soft. Then drain off the water, mash the bread fine. To three pints of the bread pulp put a couple of beaten eggs, three or four tablespoons full of flour, and a little salt. Dissolve a teaspoonful of saleratus to a teacup of milk, strain it, then stir it into the bread. Add more milk till it is of the right consistency to fry. The batter should be rather thicker than that of buckwheat cakes, and cooked in the same manner. Another way of making them, which is very good, is to mix half a pint of wheat flour with enough cold milk or water to render it a thick batter, and a couple of tablespoons full of yeast. When light, mix the batter with the bread, which should be previously soaked soft and mashed fine, add salt and a teaspoonful of saleratus dissolved in a little milk. Fry them in just fat enough to prevent their sticking to the frying pan. 158. Green Corn Cake Mix a pint of grated green corn with three tablespoons full of milk, a teacup of flour, half a teacup of melted butter, one egg, a teaspoonful of salt, and half a teaspoonful of pepper. Drop this mixture into hot butter by the spoonful, let the cakes fry eight or ten minutes. These cakes are nice served up with meat for dinner. 159. Indian Corn Cake Stir into a quart of sour or buttermilk a couple of teaspoons full of saleratus, a little salt, and sifted Indian meal to render it a thick batter. A little cream improves the cake. Bake it in deep cake pans about an hour. When sour milk cannot be procured, boil sweet milk and turn it onto the Indian meal. When cool, put in three beaten eggs to a quart of the meal. Add salt to the taste. 160. Indian Slapjacks Scald a quart of Indian meal. When lukewarm, turn, stir in half a pint of flour, half a teacup of yeast, and a little salt. When light, fry them in just fat enough to prevent their sticking to the frying pan. Another method of making them, which is very nice, is to turn boiling milk or water onto the Indian meal, in the proportion of a quart of the former to a pint of the latter, stir in three tablespoons full of flour, three eggs well beaten, and a couple of teaspoons full of salt. 161. Journey or Johnny Cakes Scald a quart of sifted Indian meal with sufficient water to make it a very thick batter. Stir in two or three teaspoons full of salt. Mold it with the hand into small cakes. In order to mold them up, it will be necessary to rub a good deal of flour on the hands to prevent their sticking. Fry them in nearly fat enough to cover them. When brown on the underside, they should be turned. 
It takes about 20 minutes to cook them. When cooked, split and butter them. Another way of making them, which is nice, is to scald the Indian meal and put in saleratus, dissolved in milk, and salt, in the proportion of a teaspoonful of each to a quart of meal. Add two or three tablespoons full of wheat flour and drop the batter by the large spoonful into a frying pan. The batter should be of a very thick consistency, and there should be just fat enough in the frying pan to prevent the cake sticking to it. 162. Hoe Cakes Scald a quart of Indian meal with just water enough to make a thick batter. Stir in a couple of teaspoons full of salt and two tablespoons full of butter. Turn it into a buttered bake pan and bake it half an hour. 163. Muffins. Mix a quart of wheat flour smoothly with a pint and a half of lukewarm milk, half a teacup of yeast, a couple of beaten eggs, a heaping teaspoonful of salt, and a couple of tablespoons full of lukewarm melted butter. Set the batter in a warm place to rise. When light, butter your muffin cups, turn in the mixture, and bake the muffins till a light brown. 164. Raised Flour Waffles. Stir into a quart of flour sufficient lukewarm milk to make a thick batter. The milk should be stirred in gradually so as to have it free from lumps. Put in a tablespoonful of melted butter, a couple of beaten eggs, a teaspoonful of salt, and half a teacup of yeast. When risen, fill your waffle irons with the batter, bake them on a hot bed of coals. When they have been on the fire between two and three minutes, turn the waffle irons over. When brown on both sides, they are sufficiently baked. The waffle irons should be well greased with lard and very hot before each one is put in. The waffles should be buttered as soon as cooked. Serve them up with powdered white sugar and cinnamon. 165. Quick Waffles Mix flour and cold milk together to make a thick batter. To a quart of the flour put six beaten eggs, a tablespoonful of melted butter, and a teaspoonful of salt. Some cooks add a quarter of a pound of sugar and half a nutmeg. Bake them immediately. 166. Rice Waffles Take a teacup and a half of boiled rice, warm it with a pint of milk, mix it smooth, then take it from the fire, stir in a pint of cold milk and a teaspoonful of salt. Beat four eggs and stir them in, together with sufficient flour to make a thick batter. 167. Rice Wafers Melt a quarter of a pound of butter and mix it with a pound of rice flour, a teaspoonful of salt, and a wine glass of wine. Beat four eggs and stir in, together with just cold milk enough to enable you to roll them out easily. They should be rolled out as thin as possible, cut with a wine glass into cakes, and baked in a moderate oven on buttered flat tins. End of chapter 10. Recording by Nick Number.